Who are the best players on all 32 NFL teams entering 2024? What's going on, football fans? It's Mitch back here with another NFL rankings video. And in this video, the top five players on all 32 NFL teams entering the 2024 NFL season. If you're excited, for my top five players on your favorite team, Gronk spike the like button, man. And if we get 100 likes on this video, I will provide my top five players of all time on all 32 teams. So 100 likes, we'll have a little bit of a mix up, a historic video on the channel. Also comment your reaction to my top five. Let me know if I'm right. Let me know if I'm accurate. Let me know if I missed and whiffed in the comment section below. I'm going to rank them. You react to them. As Bill Belichick said, do your job. Subscribe for more NFL rankings just like this. And let's go, man. Let's have some fun talking about some great players in the NFL right now. This gives me a good feel for how talented each roster truly is, at least at the top of each team. Let's begin in alphabetical order, of course, with the Arizona Cardinals. The Arizona Cardinals' best player, at least in my opinion, is probably Buda Baker, although I don't think it's like solidified. I'd also say that Buda Baker has maybe slightly declined over the last couple of seasons, but what I love about his game, he's a human missile, man. This guy is everywhere all at once. He's in the box. He's a great tackler. He can blitz and pressure the quarterback. He can fly around and pick off screen passes behind the line of scrimmage. He can play the free safety role. He's a very good player that I almost wish was on a better team right now, but Cardinals fans love him. He has been their best, most consistent player over the last couple of years. And that's why he's my number one. Kyler Murray has the potential to be the best player on the Cardinals. But again, I didn't really take into account on all these lists like quarterbacks being more valuable than other positions. Quarterbacks already get an inherent boost in my mind from that position just holding so much weight. And it just therefore has that significance when you're ranking a quarterback. It's really hard compared to the rest of the positions. But Kyler is the make or break for this team. If he plays at an elite level, which he's capable of with his wicked playmaking ability, both in his legs and his arm, then, of course, this team could be better than I expect. Trey McBride and Marvin Harrison Jr. will help him provide some offense this year. I'm really excited for rookie Marvin Harrison Jr., who I think could be one of the best rookie receivers we've ever seen. And I'm excited that he actually has a productive quarterback. Typically, we see a, a receiver like this not have a talented passer to go along with him right away. But in this case, we have a first overall pick quarterback that has a unique skill set, touch, and arm strength. And Marvin Harrison Jr. will probably be able to ball out. Because he's pretty reminiscent of Kyler's favorite target so far in his NFL career, DeAndre Hopkins. Trey McBride could be one of the best tight ends in football this year. He was kind of low-key last year, but I think people will really take notice this year thanks to fantasy football. I could see him having a 1,000-yard season. I really love his game, especially the way that he works the middle of the field. He feels uncoverable against linebackers. The bottom of the list was a little tricky. I went with Jalen Thompson to stay on the list here. At number five, I just think he's been very consistent for this team. He's played, you know, all over. He's a very good tackler, very consistent in the run game, can play in the box, but has also played deeper in the secondary depending on where Buddha is lined up. But these two really complement each other well and provide a steady safety position for this team. Thompson is one of the more underrated players, in my opinion, at that position over the past couple of years. And then Paris Johnson Jr., I added as the honorable mention, more for the potential. You know, you might argue that somebody like Jonah Williams might be a little bit better or James Conner might be a tad bit better than Paris Johnson right now. But 
halfway through next year, you would expect the first round pick from a year ago to be the steady blindside blocker for Kyler Murray. He already had a fairly good rookie season. I just expect that to dial up a notch more. So Paris Johnson Jr. is going to hold it down for the Cardinals on the offensive line. That's my top five for the Cardinals. Next up, we've got the Atlanta Falcons. The Falcons are up next. And Chris Lindstrom is my pick for the best player on the Atlanta Falcons. Chris Lindstrom was graded as the top guard in all of football in 2023. And he has been one of the best guards in the NFL for the past two or three years, in my opinion. Has kind of gone under the radar as well. Excellent in the run game. And he has been paid accordingly as well. So he is their best player. Jesse Bates, though, gives him a run for his money. I was extremely impressed by Jesse Bates last year. With going from Cincinnati to Atlanta, people would wonder how that would work out. But honestly, he might have had the best season of his entire career. Day one, instant impact. Right? He had two picks in like the first game of the season. And everyone's like, yep, yeah, that, that's going to help them in the back end of this defense. And I don't think it's really a coincidence that the Falcons defense got a lot better after adding Jesse Bates. Now he'll be going through another scheme change. Raheem Morris will be bringing his defense to the table, but when you have a free safety that is so rangy, so fast, covers so much ground, there's so much you can do with that player, so savvy and smart, and physical as well for that position, I, I love Jesse Bates, I love that type of archetype of player, Bijan Robinson could be the best running back in the NFL one day, he has that type of all-around skill set from the demeanor and the work ethic to the power the cuts, right? The jump cuts, the make you miss ability, the receiving ability, even the explosiveness. He doesn't have the most amazing, like next level gear to run away from a defense. But when he makes that two or three cuts, that man, he is just special and he sees all the lanes. So I, I think Bijan's going to have a huge year this year. AJ Terrell is one of the best corners in the NFL. He has proven it in multiple systems and seasons now. And A.J. Terrell especially is just so smooth and fluid with his movement. And he's very good at breaking on the football. And he has been the number one guy for them for quite some time now. Drake London expecting a big jump after they signed Kirk Cousins. I think that's the type of quarterback that he needs to take his game to the next level. But Drake London is low-key already pretty good. I think he's actually underrated right now. Just great size. I think he's an underrated route runner. Very strong hands and deceptive yards after catch ability in Drake London. He has been a target machine for them. When they do pass the ball, it often goes to Drake London. David Onyemata is just a very steady upfront force in the run and the pass game. I felt like he was their best front seven and defensive lineman last year overall they signed him from new orleans played really well once again in that defense and i think he'll still be pretty good in 2024 so he's my honorable mention those are the top five players on the atlanta falcons next up the baltimore ravens the team that everybody says i hate in the comments or at least ravens fans think that but i don't again for the a millionth time lamar jackson is the number one player on the baltimore ravens who would have guessed it I don't know. He is the MVP of the NFL after all. So that's self-explanatory. But I think Lamar is often kind of like underrated. I'm not even going to lie. Like a lot of people don't give him the credit that he deserves. He is so talented and so fun to watch and one of the most exciting players in the NFL today. Kyle Hamilton is arguably the best safety in the NFL. And if he's not the best safety in the NFL, he might be the best nickel corner in the NFL. Right, like, what position does he truly play? Sometimes he's in the sec the back end of the secondary playing deep safety. Sometimes he's at the nickel and blitzing or defending the run or blowing a screen pass up. He does everything well. I think his IQ and his ability to read the game and offenses is just next level, and that's what makes him so good. He's not the fastest, 
but he looks like he's flying because he just sees everything ahead of everybody else. Roquan Smith is similar in that regard. He's not the biggest human out there, but he flies. He's legit fast. He's very physical, and he almost has a throwback style to a Ray Lewis in the way that he commands the defense. His his overall command, his spirit, his his vocal nature at that position is almost a lost art, and he is a flying missile everywhere in in any facet of the game, run game, pass game, very, very good player. Mark Andrews is one of the best tight ends in football still, despite injuries. Uh, Mark Andrews is a monster in the red zone, a third down chain mover, Lamar's favorite target, really tough to handle because he seems to catch everything in his vicinity. Justin Matabike is number five, their best pass rusher on this team. Signed a nice long-term contract with Baltimore this offseason. Had a 12, 12 and a half sack season this past campaign. And Matabike, man, he's really quick. I, I love his explosiveness, his ability to penetrate and uh, use his hands to get inside. He is, he is just a lot to handle because he has that just jump off the ball, that burst. So Matabike is the guy that sets everything up for their pass rush, and he demands that double team now moving forward. Marlon Humphrey was my honorable mention. There was a couple different players I could have went with here, but Marlon Humphrey ultimately has been most consistent in my opinion. He has been their number one corner for more than a few years now, outside perimeter corner for a majority of last year, but he can also play nickel. He's huge. He's got a really weird frame that's often hard for, for receivers to get around at the line of scrimmage. He's very physical uh, and a very, very smart player. So Marlon Humphrey, man, zone, he can handle all the different coverages that this hybrid secondary typically asks of their secondary. So Marlon Humphrey is next on the list and my honorable mention. Those are the top five players on the Baltimore Ravens. The Buffalo Bills. Josh Allen is the number one player, obviously, just like Lamar Jackson. In any given season, Josh Allen can be the best player in the NFL. He could be the MVP. And I actually argued last year that he was the MVP. You know, no trying to slight here Lamar. He definitely deserved it in his own right. But when you lead the NFL in touchdowns the way that Josh Allen did, running the football, throwing the football, with limited talent around you in many facets, when you have an offense that oftentimes you watch drives and you watch games where nothing is available or open and Josh Allen carries the team, and the team goes into games understanding that if Allen does not play well, they have no chance to win. He is that good of a player that he takes over every single time this team is in a game or winning a game. He is that good, and I think people need to put some respect on Josh Allen's name. There are far too many haters that say, oh, turnovers. Well, let me tell you something. All the best quarterbacks in football right now are maybe turning it over more often because they're making more plays. They are playmakers, and Josh Allen is a playmaker. He does it with his legs and his arm, and he is by far the best player on the Buffalo Bills. Matt Milano, in my opinion, is their second best player. He is their best defensive player. I love the way he plays linebacker. Great instincts, great movement in coverage. He's always been extremely steady in that regard. Is a little smaller, but in Sean McDermott's defense, he just is so smart, sees football so well, and he's one of those, another linebacker that just reads the game, is a general on the field. Milano can do pretty much anything you ask him to do at that position in that scheme, and he knows that scheme so well. Deion Dawkins is my under-the-radar number three. I think he's been one of the most underrated left tackles in football for the past, like, five, six, seven years. Just a very steady player. He really never gets beat that often, and... You know, just probably that one player that Allen can always and has always been able to rely on on his offensive line. Ed Oliver, I think, has become a very good player in his own right. Took him some time after being drafted very high, but he's become a, a, a true penetrator in their four-man front where he's able to get after it, get up field, and you know, just absolutely terrorize offensive lines in a hurry. He's got great burst, great quickness for that position. 
And yeah, he's probably one of their better defensive players. Gregory Rousseau was my number five. I think he is low key becoming a excellent pass rusher. He is super athletic with freakish traits. And I think he'll continue to break out in 2024. Their entire cornerback group could have been picked on this list. Rasul Douglas, because of that, was my honorable mention. Teron Johnson, Christian Benford could have also been selected here. Really, the offense, you know, James Cook possibly, but the offense really didn't have a lot of names for me to go with here because of the change in the skill positions. But I think their defense has a lot of good players, but the Bills were one of those teams where a lot of good, but not a lot of great. So it was kind of difficult to decipher between number six or number eight or number nine on my rankings. And ultimately, that's what I decided. Rasul Douglas was excellent when he came in last year. He was the true replacement for what they've been missing in Tredavious White. And he continues to play rock-solid football. Green Bay, the last couple of years, he's been a great player. And with Buffalo, it seemed like he got even better in a more steady and consistent scheme. The Carolina Panthers are up next. The Panthers' best player is by far Derek Brown, in my opinion. I don't think it's really a conversation. Now that Brian Burns has been traded, I think Derek Brown clearly, clearly has that crown. And I think even if Burns was still on the team, I'd still give it to Derek Brown. He is not a sack guy. He is not a big pass rushing specialist. And I will stand by that. But he is an excellent just move people at the line of scrimmage. Great run defender. And he does provide a steady dose of pressure. He is that force from the interior that allows everybody around him to be better. And Derek Brown, I think, is going to continue to play. Probably just now entering his peak of play in Carolina. He is their best player by far. Robert Hunt was signed to $100 million for a reason because he's very good at playing offensive line in the NFL. And I, notice how I said offensive line, not guard, not tackle, because he does it all. He's an excellent run blocker, especially in zone scheme. And he could play right tackle. He can play guard. His versatility is off the charts. His steadiness is off the charts. So he's my number two. Taylor Moten has been an excellent player for a number of years in Carolina. One of their most steady players for, you know, he's been blocking since Cam Newton was there at quarterback. So just a very underrated player for a number of years at the right tackle position and probably been a top 10 right tackle in the league for the past like five or six years. JC Horn. His potential certainly suggests that he can be a top three player on this team, but when he's on the field, he is a top five player, and as as I am projecting into 2024, I think he will reside in that area. He is very physical, very good in press coverage. I think he's great in man-to-man -man coverage. I'm intrigued to see how he plays at a consistent rate in the NFL for a full season. He needs to stay healthy, but a lot of talent there when he does play. Jadavian Clowney sneaks into the top five here. Clowney had an excellent season for Baltimore. I believe he had more than nine sacks last year. Still plays at a high level, really good at setting the edge, really good in the run game, plays with a uh, just a great base of power and speed to power, and he's always been a freak athlete. The only thing Clowney doesn't really have is that next level bend ability to become a 12 plus sack monster. But in terms of blitzes, different angles and, and, you know, pressure packages, and then also run game, he's always been a great player. Deontay Johnson is my honorable mention. Wicked route runner can separate. I think he'll be the number one receiver on this team by quite a wide margin. So that's why I put him as the honorable mention here. The Chicago Bears have quite a few excellent players. So this list was really difficult. Jalen Johnson is my number one, though, pretty decisively. He was one of the best corners in the NFL last season. Excellent in zone coverage. And often he was so good that teams just were throwing at Stevenson the entire game. So, you know, Jalen Johnson is really becoming that good of a player and a great playmaker for the secondary of the Bears. DJ Moore, I thought, had maybe the best season of his career last year, whether it was taking a screen pass to the house, you know, a slant, or just a deep ball. He he really opened his game to a new level, in my opinion. So, so fast. A, a guy that looks like a running back, but has vertical capability, which is very rare. And a good intermediate player as well. I, I just think they can use him in so many different ways. He's just such a three-level threat at that wide receiver position. Montez Sweat, he is such a good player. You know, really opened my eyes when he got traded to Chicago just because, like, think about it this way. Chicago, before they got Montez Sweat, was a pretty below-average defense. 
They add Montez Sweat despite adding a couple linebackers in the offseason. They weren't good until Montez Sweat got there. Instantly, when Montez Sweat got there, their defense changed to a new level. He is a great athlete, got great power, and a really freakish just trait. Like, his speed is amazing. He really fits this defense really well. Keenan Allen, one of the best receivers over the past, like, 10 years in the NFL. I've, I've been expecting this guy to fall off for a number of seasons, and he just won't quit and won't do it. And struggled with injuries at times in his career, but just continues to play and continue to ball out. He is a target machine, a route-running extraordinaire. Keenan Allen is an all-timer, in my opinion, uh, I, of this era, I think. He's making a case for Hall of Fame type numbers at this point. TJ Edwards is just a very smart, very steady linebacker. He doesn't really wow you with his ability, but he is just a very, very assignment sound player. Tremaine Edmonds is a little bit of the opposite. He has more flash, more uh, big play capabilities. Like you saw that in the turnovers he was able to create in Chicago, but he does have times where he whiffs in coverage. He misses an assignment or he does whiff on a tackle in the run game. But when he is on, he is an excellent player. So Edmonds is a tricky one that I could see some fans not loving here, but I, I had to put him just because I think his impact in the middle of the field in big moments was pretty significant. For the Cincinnati Bengals, Joe Burrow is obviously their best player. He is a top three or four quarterback in the NFL, and if you are that, you are probably the best player <laughs> on your team. Burrow, I love the way he plays because as a Tom Brady fan myself, I I am in dire need of watching a quarterback that runs an offense and operates the offense in the way that Burrow does, which is through his IQ and what's between the ears, as Tom Brady would put it. He's extremely accurate with the ball and never seems to miss where he should be putting the ball, where he should be going with the ball. And when Joe Burrow is in rhythm, there are few that are better. So Burrow is my number one. Jamar Chase just like Burrow, when he is on, he is arguably the best player at his position. Jamar Chase is an absolute monster. I love his ability to create after the catch when it comes to screens or simple, you know, smoke passes right as a flat. He breaks the first tackle nearly every single time. He is a vertical threat to the point where you have to put a safety over the top. And he will just consistently on third down run a stop route and just catch an eight-yard pass and get that first down. But when him and Burrow are clicking, they are magical. Trey Hendrickson is one of the most underrated pass rushers in the NFL. Excellent player. Just an absolute incredible motor. And, you know, of course I'm talking about the WHIT E, uh, defensive end when it comes to motor but man this guy just you saw it in New Orleans you see it in Cincinnati his ability to get o get around the edge use his hands and just continue to work with effort just unbelievable love watching this guy play he's very very similar to Max Crosby but he doesn't get the same sort of credit T Higgins is a really good player one of the best jump ball artists in the NFL Mike Hilton is one of the best nickels in football for the past like seven years. Great tackler, very smart player, executes everything at a high level, great in zone coverage, can line up against slot receivers and play man. He's very feisty. He sticks his nose in and makes tackles. Logan Wilson was my honorable mention. This was a tricky one. I could have went with a number of different players, but Wilson overall, in my opinion, maybe had a slightly weaker season last year. But when he's w playing well and at his best and overall his consistency over the past three years, he is very smart. I love his coverage capabilities and just demands this defense and commands this defense. And yeah, just overall, just a, just a very steady player in the middle of that defense. So he is the leader of that unit, I think, in my opinion. Logan Wilson is my honorable mention. Those are the Bengals. Next up, we've got the Cleveland Browns, who have an extremely talented roster. Miles Garrett, in my opinion, is pretty easily the best player on this team. Miles Garrett is one of the best defensive players in all of football and was arguably the best defensive player in the NFL last year. He demands double teams on every play. His, his ability in the pass and the run game... Honestly, like Miles Garrett is one of the most perfect football players you will ever watch. He might not be one of the best... 
But in terms of just you trying to create a defensive end for any era in any defense, in any scheme, in the run or the pass game, Miles Garrett is as close to perfect of a player as you can get. He can dip around the corner and beat you with speed. He can manhandle you with power. He is good in the run game, can set a hard edge. He could probably line up as a 3-4 outside linebacker in a Bill Belichick 1986 Giants defense. He could play, you know, a Seattle scheme 2013 Legion of Boom, obviously, he can play everything, man. Uh, this past season, Jim Schwartz set him up with more matchups and more different diverse ways. Him standing up, uh, just incredible athlete, incredible player. One of the best players in the NFL. Nick Chubb is one of the best running backs when he's healthy and on the field. He is a pleasure to watch with his explosiveness and ability to hit the home run. Joel Batonio is one of the best guards in the NFL. One of the most consistent football players in the NFL, period. Wyatt Teller has been a great player since coming to Cleveland. Short little stint in Buffalo turns into a great player with a little bit of coaching in Cleveland and has been one of the best guards in the NFL ever since. A vicious run game player. Amari Cooper, I've just really come to appreciate Amari Cooper over the years. Has always been good and was expected to be phenomenal coming out of the draft. He's lived up to expectations. He's been an excellent player in a multitude of different offenses and schemes and teams. And he's just so smooth. I just love how smooth he is. He is just greasy out there with his routes, with his releases. Uh, he has become a better player, in my opinion, in Cleveland, a tougher player. A, a just He's always been nuanced, always been just gifted, but his his experience, his, his grittiness has definitely upped in Cleveland. Next up, Dallas, former Amari Cooper's team. Uh, the Dallas Cowboys have a great talent, right? Uh, Micah Parsons is their best player, pretty easily, in my opinion. Micah Parsons is one of the most special edge players I've ever seen in my life. I think he's a future Hall of Famer. His ability to play linebacker at the level that he can play it, his ability to play the pass and in terms of blitzing from different angles while standing up, his ability to put his hand in the dirt and rush and just take over a drive or a game. His speed is like unlike anything I've ever seen at that position. He is so fast. It's absolutely terrifying to watch. Uh, CD Lamb is a gift to the receivers. I, I just... His, he is so, he is a savant in my opinion. His ability to stop, start, run routes from a horizontal perspective, his ability to separate is just incredible. I thought his yak this year took it to the next level. His ability to just become that receiver this year that was just like every single time that team needed a play, he made the play. He upped his game in terms of Julian Edelman playoff type of, you know what I'm talking about? Like Travis Kelsey in the playoffs. Like CeeDee Lamb was that throughout the entire regular season for Dallas where it was like every third down, every red zone trip, every time Dak needed a play, he's going to 88 and you can't stop him. That's what it was for me. Number three, Zach Martin is a future Hall of Famer. There is no doubt about it, but he has regressed slightly. He's still one of the best guards in the NFL. One of the most perfect players at his position I've ever watched. Just flawless technical player and just a great edge in the run game as well. Dak Prescott's my number four for Dallas. I feel like that's pretty, pretty you know, honest, pretty safe. Uh, he he was excellent last year, but I think overall, you know, Parsons, Lamb, and Martin are better players on a consistent basis. But Dak had games last year where he certainly carried the team, so there's no question about that. But he is a smart player, and like I I talked about him, you know, not long ago, he does everything well. It's just that he does nothing at an elite level. So Dak is a good player. At number five, Demarcus Lawrence. I love watching Demarcus Lawrence. I think he's one of the best run defenders in the NFL. And you can line him up in a lot of different ways. He can play in the interior. He can play on the edge. And still plays at a high level. He's been in the league for a while now. Trayvon Diggs is great. Uh, looking forward to watching him this year. He didn't get to play last year really at all. But this year... I'm looking forward to seeing him become that number one corner once again. I think he doesn't get enough credit for his actual coverage skills. 
He became an excellent player two years ago. Just overall, I know he was known for his interceptions a couple years back, but he really became a man-to-man shut down. I'm going to take the number one guy out. And that's really going to change their defense from that perspective. He could be like the Xavier Woods uh, for Zimmer uh, a few years back. Then you've got the Denver Broncos. This one was tricky just because there's not a lot of elite players on the Broncos. There's a few good players here. Like Patrick Sertan is as close to an elite player as they have. He is one of the best corners, in my opinion, in the NFL Uh, I think that he's just very well-schooled. He is very technical. I think the way that he moves with no false steps is excellent. His hips are very well calculated. He isn't the fastest. He can be beat at times because of that. But I think overall, zone, man, press, he is a very complete player. Then you have Cortland Sutton, who I thought had an amazing bounce back season that I did not see coming. He is a great jump ball player, and anytime Russ needed a big explosive play, he just chucked it. Cortland was down there somewhere, and he made the play. I mean, I really have a lot more respect for Cortland Sutton after what he did this past season. Quinn Miners is at number three, their best offensive lineman, just a good player overall. At number four, Zach Allen. Uh, I like that signing for Denver, and I think overall he's probably their best defensive lineman. John Franklin Myers also comes to the team, so he gives him a little bit of competition in that regard. But Zach Allen, I think he's still, you know, hitting that peak, right? He was there in Arizona uh, with that defensive coordinator, same defensive coordinator in Denver. He's there now, and I think Zach Allen's really going to up his game this year. They're expecting him to do big things. I think he, he will, but... He learned a lot from J.J. Watt, and I think this is really paying off. Garrett Bowles at number five. Garrett Bowles has just been a good player for a long time. I almost kind of, it kind of sucks that he got to Denver like right after I think they were like good. So he's kind of missed that run, but overall, he's been a really steady left tackle. So Garrett Bowles, like, like his game. Jonathan Cooper, he had a really deceptive season last year. I think he had like nine or 10 sacks last season, so... Look out for him. He's a former, I think, seventh round pick, but plays really hard. I think he's got, like a lot of these Denver rushers, he's more of a smaller uh, finesse rusher that can dip around the corner and get to the quarterback, and he's also involved in those blitzing schemes. So Vance Joseph likes this guy a lot. I like this guy too. Jonathan Cooper is my honorable mention. Detroit Lions, Penny Sewell, in my opinion, is their best player. Uh, this one was a little tricky, but I think overall, I, I think I made the right pick. Penny Sewell is one of the best right tackles in the NFL. Arguably the best right tackle now that Tristan Wirfs is solidified at left tackle. But yeah, j- just an excellent player. Uh, we knew he was going to be great as soon as he was drafted. It was it was like a toss-up for Cincinnati. Do we pick the great receiver, Jamar Chase, the great tackle, uh, Penny Sewell out of Oregon and ultimately it worked out for both teams so I you know you can't really uh, hate on that but Sewell is a beast in the run game he really does so much in that regard moves so well is so powerful as well just a flawless really a flawless player and gonna be so good for so long I, he might be a future Hall of Famer really I haven't really thought of that but he might be uh, Amon Ra St. Brown love watching him play love the little man that can always And, you know, I've said it many times at this point, but he gives me those Wes Welker flashbacks when I watch him run, you know, a little bit of a, like a, a little bit of a, a horizontal option route or a stop and go type of route, or just the, the, the way that he gets yards after catch. Uh, He, he's such a tough player. I love the way that he just sees the game. He sees it like a quarterback. He knows when to stop against zone. He's he's always a comfortable option uh, to start drives, to convert third downs and extend drives. Even a deceptive option in the red zone. Amon Ra is an excellent receiver. Aiden Hutchinson is, is just continuing to get better. Many people say that he is my brother. Uh, shout out to my brother there. But Aiden Hutchinson is... I I love the motor he plays with too. I mean, he plays with edge. He plays with a toughness. He plays with the bite the kneecap mentality that Dan Campbell has really been looking for and really been, you know, indenting in this team. And Hutchinson is that personified. Um, He plays, I think, with really good hands, 
Like, that's the thing that stands out to me. He's not the freakish, like, power player or the freakish uh, dip player, but his hands and his length is a rare combination. Frank Ragnow is just a monster in the run game, one of the toughest players you will ever see. Taylor Decker, just super steady. Super steady player, had to belong on this list at left tackle. And Sam Laporta was my honorable mention. Young player that's rising, one of the best tight ends in football, really good after the catch. Loved him coming out of college. Uh, Really, really savvy route runner. And I think his combination of like thickness and size and the quickness he plays with, not necessarily speed, but quickness, is a really tough cover for a lot of defensive backs. So he's my honorable mention, which could have also been Jameer Gibbs, could have been Jared Goff. There's quite a few different players, Branch maybe even, that could have been on this list, but Detroit has a lot of good players. Green Bay Packers are up next. Rashawn Gary, in my opinion, is the number one guy. Just in terms of steadiness, Rashawn Gary, I think at his best, is an absolute beast. I mean, I would love to have Rashawn Gary on my defense. He's such a powerhouse. He he dominates at the point of attack, can absolutely overwhelm tackles, and he is one of those guys that in certain games, there's just bad matchups for him because he's so powerful and so fast that like he is just overwhelming. So Gary is still underrated. Uh, Jair Alexander probably can be the best player on this team. It's just that half the time he's not playing and the other half the time he's not trying. So when Alexander is trying and when they give him the capability of just locking people down one-on-one, he is the best player on this team. So Alexander is a bit frustrating because I could see him unleashed in a different scheme or different defense. Hopefully that's the case this year. And just if he had his head on straight more consistently, I think he would be the best player on this team. It's just the consistency for me. Kenny Clark is my number three. Just been so good for so long. I've always loved Kenny Clark. And there's been so much pressure on him to perform. They never put extra guys in the box to help against a run. It's like, Kenny, you got to take this double team. You got to eat it. And then you've got to help us get to the quarterback as well. So he's just been very good. Elton Jenkins, you could argue should be higher. Can play right tackle, can play guard. Excellent player. Great versatility. Maybe the most versatile lineman in the entire NFL. Xavier McKinney is an excellent safety and excellent signing as well. Great high IQ. Plays in the box. Play free safety. uh, Can lock up tight ends. Playmaker. Great player. It's going to be a great addition. Jordan Love was my honorable mention. I couldn't really, you know, I was trying to not put Jordan Love on the list, honestly, but it's kind of hard not to. Jordan Love late last year was excellent. He's a baller. Love that about him. I love some love. And, you know, I think he's only going to prove why he's on this list this year. He's going to have another good year and maybe even better year this year. The Houston Texans. This one uh, was really tricky. Because I think there's like three or four players here that could be number one. But I went with Laramie Tunzel. And the reason why is he's been the best player on Houston consistently for like the past four years. Ever since he's been there, the most consistent best player is Laramie Tunzel. And I think it's really hard to find a tackle that's as good as him as a pure pass blocker. He might be the best pass blocker in the NFL. Maybe outside of Trent Williams, right? And Tunzel's just so good. So... Yeah, like I could have went with Stroud. I could have went with Hunter. But I think consistently speaking, Tunzel is the best player. Then CJ Stroud probably will be the best player this year. Like if I had to guess who's going to be the best player on Houston, probably Stroud. And it's hard to deny how much he elevated this roster, this team, this franchise last year. He is so accurate. It's, It's unbelievable. He might be the most accurate player already in the NFL. And I just love his gamer nature to him as well. The way that he extends plays, the way that he buys in the pocket, and the way that he just deals with that quick release is special. Daniil Hunter has been one of the best pass rushers in football for like a decade. So, you know, a complete monster. Complete monster. Looks like a statue. Nico Collins, I think is underrated. I mean, you know, even talking to like Durkant, like, he was underrating him. I'm like, dude, this guy is a beast. Like, he was like third in yards per route run, second in yards after catch, only behind Debo Samuel per route run. Um, just a beast. The next Andre Johnson, like, there's routes where he's running a crosser and he's open by 10 yards. Like, he's, the thing about Nico Collins is he's big and he's fast. 
He's like six foot four, and he can run a four three. It's really hard to find those guys. Um, and he finally found confidence. Will Anderson proved me wrong in his rookie year. Technician, animal, great consistency, great effort level. Just a football player overall. Love watching him. Derek Stingley, I think, is going to have another great year. I thought he played really well last year, really stepped up. This, I think in this season is going to be his best year of his career. So I put him as the honorable mention. So because, you know, I could have went with other players, but like Diggs, for example, I'm going, okay, Derek Stingley's younger, right? Derek Stingley's entering his prime. Stephon Diggs is leaving his prime. So that was kind of the toss-up for me there. But yeah, that's what that's why I went with Stingley. Uh, the Indianapolis Colts, DeForest Buckner is the best player on the team. Buckner is one of the best defensive tackles in the NFL since about 2017, 2018 with the 49ers. And he's all, almost like gotten better with age. Like, honestly, like he's been like a top five defensive tackle for the past five years. So yeah, he's a beast and he's there. Not only is he a really good run defender, but he's also an excellent pass rusher. I mean, like there are not a lot of D tackles on their team. There's probably like five or six that are asked to be the leading sacker and the best run defender on their defensive line. And that's DeForest Buckner. Uh, Quinton Nelson, complete monster. I don't think he gets the credit that he probably deserves at this point. Like, I think there was a moment when he was younger where he's maybe overrated, and now it feels like he's underrated. He's just a beast. Like, he just runs people over. Uh, Jonathan Taylor, I think still one of the best running backs in the NFL. There's just few running backs that possess his type of of size and power and workhorse capability in this age, but also the speed and breakaway ability that he has. Uh, he could be a better receiver, but overall he is an excellent runner. Uh, Michael Pittman Jr. I forgot to put the junior, but regardless, you know who it is. Uh, I, I think he's better than people think. Like I think Michael Pittman is one of those guys that he's just, you, you're going to check the box score and it doesn't matter what defense he plays, what corner he plays. He probably had six catches. He probably had 80 yards. Like, that's Michael Pittman, right? So, and he's a good red zone threat. He's a good uh, possession receiver. Braden Smith, one of the best right tackles in the NFL, period. Ryan Kelly, one of the best centers in the NFL, is my honorable mention. Kelly is a beast in the run game. Love watching him. Jacksonville. Josh Allen. No, not that Josh Allen. The other one is their best player, uh, in my opinion. And notice how I don't have Trevor Lawrence on this list. Maybe I'm hating. I could have put Trevor Lawrence at number five or the honorable mention spot. But I think my top four is pretty secure there. You guys let me know what you think, Jags fans. But Josh Allen is definitely their best player. I don't think there's any question about that. Uh, he is a really good player. And I love uh, the way he plays in terms of he is a great pass rusher. He's got great finesse, great speed, um, ability to dip around the corner and get after the quarterback but also he could drop into coverage like he's got a little bit of that type of uh, of tj watt to him he's a great playmaker aluakon is love aluakon i i wish he was on my team he he's a human like battering ram and just does not care i mean i don't think there is a, a linebacker in the nfl that makes more tackles at the line of scrimmage than aluakon He's just like there in the hole every time. Christian Kirk is my number three, which maybe I was a little too high on him looking at it now. Maybe Campbell should be above him, but Kirk is just really consistent. It's hard to rank him because like, yeah, he's not the most talented receiver in the league. If you were ranking receivers, he's probably like 25th or something like maybe a little bit better than that, but he's just so consistent for them. It's hard to overlook what he does for this team. His ability to start drives, his ability to end drives, his ability to extend on third down. Uh, his route running is great. I think he's a very smart and savvy slot player, and he's good after the catch. It's just a really hard one to kind of maneuver where he actually belongs on this list. Tyson Campbell is one of those players that's less consistent than Kirk, but when he plays well, he plays really well. He's a great man corner, in my opinion, and should be utilized more in that way. Always covers the best receiver on the other team, so he's going to give up plays, but great speed and good press ability. Uh, Trayvon Walker is a freak. He ended the season last year with seven sacks in seven games. That speaks for itself, and he's very steady in the run game. Travis Etienne 
is a very gifted, explosive running back that can catch the football. He needs better blocking in 2024, but I think he can do everything. Like, he can play on all three downs. He can block. He can catch. He's great in the screen game. He can run it. He's not like a big back, but he's he's a good one. He's a good one. Next up, the Kansas City Chiefs. Patrick Mahomes is obviously their best player. I don't think I need to describe why. He is a three-time Super Bowl champion. He is on his way to becoming one of the greatest quarterbacks of all time if he isn't already. Chris Jones is one of the greatest defensive linemen. Yes, I said it. Of all time. I've been talking about Chris Jones, I swear to you guys, since 2017. And it feels like people have not been giving Chris Jones his credit until like recently. It's been... It's far overdue, okay? But Chris Jones has been there with Aaron Donald. If Aaron Donald didn't exist, Chris Jones would be, you know, the way that Aaron Donald has been talked about, Chris Jones would be nearly identical. Um, Travis Kelsey is one of the greatest tight ends of all time. He isn't quite as good as he was, you know, a couple years ago at this point, which is why I have Chris Jones above him. And just because Chris Jones is a defensive player and just has more moments of like single-handedly disrupting and changing a game, while Kelsey is more a product of being on a great offense with Patrick Mahomes and Andy Reid calling plays, but not trying to take anything away from Kelsey. I'm just trying to tell you how good Chris Jones is, right? But um, Travis Kelsey is not quite as good, but slowed down, but great route runner. Um, always seems to come through when they need him the most and always seems to play his best in the biggest game. That, that's all you can really say. Trent McDuffie, uh, number four for me, great player. Nickel corner is a really hard thing to do, but he does. He might be the best nickel corner in the NFL. Like if I was to pick a nickel corner to play on my defense, and because I love man coverage, I've always been a man coverage freak show. Uh, I'd probably want Trent McDuffie on my team. He is just a technical marvel at that position. Joe Tooney. You guys know I love Joe Tooney. Do I even need to talk about it? Joe Tooney, uh, Patriot Hall of Famer, probably. Maybe a Hall of Famer in general. I think he's got three rings now. Maybe four, bro. The guy is stacked with the rings. Um, Four. He has four, right? Dude, come on. Creed Humphrey. Top two, three center in the NFL. And a beast in the run game. The Las Vegas Raiders, Max Crosby is obviously their best player. That's not a question. Max Crosby is my favorite defensive player in the NFL. I, I, I've been saying this enough, I feel like, for you guys to know that. Max Crosby is my favorite defense. If I want to watch a pass rusher, I will watch Max Crosby. Just because the guy plays on every freaking snap, and he never gives less than 110%. He is an absolute animal. I love Max Crosby. Devontae Adams is still just art. Like Chad Johnson once said, he made Chad Johnson cry. He's so good at route running. I don't think I need to describe Devontae Adams anymore. Uh, Christian Wilkins might be number two on this list, on honestly, but absolute beast. I thought he had an incredible season with Miami. Was arguably their best defensive player last year. Maybe not even arguable. Um, Beast in the run game has always been one of the best defenders against the run. And last year, he just broke out in a big way with 10 plus sacks. I think he had like 12 maybe. But yeah, he, he's a powerhouse. Colton Miller, probably the, the Raider that doesn't get enough far recognition, like league-wide recognition. But he's been really good for a while. Great pass blocker. Andre James is a sneaky number five. Their center who had a great season last year and just a powerhouse in the run game, really gets their run downhill run game started. Great in their power scheme. Jacoby Myers, uh, I had as my honorable mention, there was a couple different players I could have went with here, but I thought Myers was excellent for the Raiders last year. I'm very disappointed that New England didn't sign him. Honestly, if New England still had Jacoby Myers, I'd be pretty excited about the receiving core right now. But, you know, we decided to sign fucking Juju, so, you know. Los Angeles Chargers. Justin Herbert. I went with Justin Herbert as their best player. I guess you could have went with Khalil Mack based on last season or Rashawn Slater based on, I think, the future. But 
Herbert is like a borderline top five quarterback in the NFL, and it feels like he carries this team on his back. So I had to go with him. He He's one of the best pocket quarterbacks in football right now. He's got an absolute rocket launcher of an arm. He's smart, and I think he's a deceptive athlete. Rashawn Slater is a great tackle all around, especially in the past game. Khalil Mack had a renaissance of a season last year. He was unbelievable. There was a couple of games where he was unblockable. And you know that he's always been great against the run, but his pass his pass rushing last year was just like, what? He hasn't been like that since like the first year in Chicago. Joey Boza is still excellent when he plays. The, the problem is he doesn't play that much, but still a really good player. So want to see him on the field healthy. Derwin James had a bit of a down year last year, but he's still good enough to be on this list. Derwin James, at his best, I think is one of the best hybrid safeties in football where he can cover slot receivers, tight ends, can tackle at a high level, make plays. Basically another corner and another linebacker all in one. Alohi Gilman was my honorable mention for his excellent season at free safety last year. Next up, the Los Angeles Rams. This might be controversial, but their best player, in my opinion, is Puka Nakua. That's my opinion. You guys can hate if you like. But Puka Nakua is... I don't even... I haven't thought of where I would rank Puka Nakua among the receivers in the NFL. But is he a top 10 receiver in the NFL? Puka Nakua is sick. And I think, like, the game that really won me over was the playoff game. Like, that playoff game against Detroit, he was sensational he couldn't be tackled he couldn't be covered and like every time they need to play Stafford just ripped the ball to Puka Nakua um he's a beast man I think he's better than Cooper Cup at this point as you guys can see and I'm worried about Cup's age and I, I definitely felt like he slowed down and deteriorated last year Matthew Stafford still is playing at an, a very high level I thought last year was a throwback in Stafford's game he was sensational at the end of the year his rhythm and and control of the offense his manipulation of the pocket his arm angles his arm strength he is still excellent uh, Williams is my number three broke out as one of the best running backs in football played on all three downs, pass blocked, caught the football, screen game, run game, red zone, short yardage, doesn't matter. He was there and he did it at a high level. Kevin Dotson, low key, one of the best guards in football last year. Really, really excellent fit for that zone scheme and they paid him for it. Kobe Turner was my honorable mention. For the future of this defense, they'll need Turner to step up. Notice how the rest of the players on the list are all on the offensive side. Ernest Jones could have been my honorable mention as well, but I went with Kobe Turner because he is probably playing the more important task and role in this defense as their leading pass rusher moving forward. The Miami Dolphins. I've got Tyreek Hill as obviously their best player. He's probably still the best receiver in the NFL and one of the best receivers in NFL history. Uh, Jalen Ramsey is maybe a future Hall of Fame cornerback. He does have a ring to his name. He was on one of the best defense, one of the best defenses of this era in the 2017 Jags. And he last season really shocked me with how good he still is. I thought his ability to play in zone and read the defense was at a new level. Like he's really evolved from a guy that mostly played one-on-one -on -one man lockdown coverage to a zone defender that reads and recognizes plays and concepts and jumps the football. But that just goes to show his all-around game, his physicality, his size, his uh, savviness, and now his intelligence. Javon Holland is an excellent athlete, fast as hell, um, flies around the football field, another good playmaker for that secondary. Jalen Waddell is one of the best number two receivers in the NFL, wicked speed, Hard to cover at times. Uh, Jalen Waddle is my number four. Jalen Phillips is my number five. I think he's one of the most underrated pass rushers in the entire NFL. His ability also on blitzes is extraordinary because of his first step. And Bradley Chubb had a resurgence last year. 
as a, one of the best power rushers in the NFL and an excellent run defender. The Minnesota Vikings. Justin Jefferson is, if Tyreek Hill is not the best receiver in the league, it is Justin Jefferson, a wizard of route running, uh, a detail-oriented technician of a football player, well-deserved contract. Christian Derrissaw is low-key one of the best tackles in the NFL. TJ Hawkinson is one of the best tight ends in football and one of my favorite to watch because, as I've said before, every single catch he makes, it looks like he got in a car crash. Uh, Jonathan Grenard is a new addition to this team, probably their best pass rusher, 12 and a half sacks last year or 12 sacks last year with Houston. Great engine, great uh, consistency, and I think he should have 10 plus sacks in this defense for Brian Flores. I think he's a good fit because he is relentless. Um, Brian O'Neill, their right tackle is also very good. Notice how both their tackles are on this list. Good future offensive line for J.J. McCarthy. And Aaron Jones was my honorable mention. I just think he's too good still to not put him on this list. I kind of hesitated because of the contract, but he was so good in the playoffs for them. I mean, like what? I really still don't know why the Packers didn't sign him. He's, he's still explosive. He could catch the football. I understand he gets hurt, but like when Aaron Jones is playing, he is, he's a difference maker, a, a rare difference maker at the running back position. So I have Aaron Jones there. You know, I could have went with maybe like Andrew Van Ginkle or one of their safeties, maybe Ivan Pace. Uh, there was a lot of different players, even like Jordan Addison. There's a lot of different players that could have made this list for the Vikings. It's a good roster. New England Patriots are up next, my Patriots. This one was tricky too, because New England has a lot of good players, but not a lot of like elite players. Judon, in my opinion, has been their best player since coming to the team, in my opinion. Um, Judon is just, just like really smart. I, he's always in the right spot. He is like an just an opportunistic pass rusher, really great length, ability to press tackles off of him, run down quarterbacks, always seems to make a play at a big moment. He is a prototypical Patriot uh, in terms of the way he plays. He, he is technically sound, but he's also a big-time playmaker at the same time and has swag. Uh, Mike Onwenu, he is a powerhouse. And the reason he's two is because he can play right tackle and right guard at a high level. When he plays guard, he's probably a top five right guard in the NFL. When he plays right tackle, he's probably a top 10 right tackle in the NFL. Uh, Christian Barmore could be number one on this list this year. He has the potential to be the next Chris Jones. He is quick off the football and extremely powerful. And it feels like there's moments where teams just simply can't block him. Kyle Duggar is one of the most gifted athletes at the safety position. He could play linebacker or deep safety. Last year, he got caught in playing more deep safety than I would have liked, but when he's in a position to make a play, he will make it. He can hit you. He can uh, track down footballs with the best of them. Uh, Christian Gonzalez is number five, a little bit of a projection, but excellent uh, coverage skills, movement skills, man, zone, I think he's going to take off this year in a major way, as I've discussed before. Jabril Peppers had one of the best safety seasons in 2023. You know, this is one of the best safety duos in football. Jabril Peppers is a throwback in a lot of ways. He reminds me a little bit of Patrick Chung for the Patriots in the past, but he hits like a hammer, dude. And he can play in the run game. He's good in the pass game. Jabril Peppers has lived up to that first round billing, but now on a new team. And the other players I could have put on this list, Dave Andrews, I considered. I definitely considered uh, Ramondre for, for a second, but not very long. Jonathan Jones, I also considered. Even players like uh, like Jawan Bentley, I you know, could have made the list, but yeah, the Patriots have quite a few good players on their team. They just don't have a lot of elite, elite players. The Saints. The Saints, I feel like this list would have been much better a couple of years ago. But Demario Davis, in my opinion, has been that consistent guy. You know, like Marshawn Lattimore, maybe at one time is their best player. On a given week, could be their best player. Ryan Ramchek might have been 
you know, a couple of years ago, their best player. But Demario Davis, like consistently speaking, has been their best player. He is one of the best linebackers in football, and he really can do everything. Run defense, elite. Coverage, very good, maybe not elite, but very, very good. Blitzing, elite, right? Like top three or four linebacker in the NFL. Uh, Ryan Ramshek, one of the best right tackles, top five in the NFL, steady force. Marshawn Lattimore, one of the best man cover corners in the NFL. Chris Olave, smooth, silky at wide receiver. Good speed, good routes. Eric McCoy, low-key, really solid center. Tyron Matthew, not as good as he used to be, but still had a good season for the Saints last year. Playing more in the box, that's where he's at home nowadays. Uh, Just very, very high IQ level and command of the defense. High IQ. New York Giants. Dexter Lawrence is by far their best player. Not even close. Not even close. He might be the best defensive tackle in the entire NFL. He he plays nose tackle, and he absolutely absurdly dominates in a way that you do not see. Uh, Andrew Thomas is one of the better left tackles in the NFL. Last year was not quite as good as the year before, but with dealing with all the other crap that Andrew Thomas has around him on that line and still playing well speaks volumes. Brian Burns is a number three, the new addition. A little bit more inconsistent than I would have liked last year. Did not have his best season. But at his best, he is one of the best pure finesse pass rushers in football with great dip and bend around the corner and can be an absolute uh, terror in, in pass rushing situations. Bobby Okereke is number four. A great signing by them, honestly. I think he is an all-around really good linebacker, and he's proven to do it in two different systems, drastically different systems. Kayvon Thibodeau is my number five. Thibodeau had 10 sacks last year, so that's why he's number five, honestly. And he's all, also pretty good in the run game. He's, he's got good... Good overall uh, hands. I I would like him to be more consistent in getting more pressures, but there are not a lot of good players on the Giants, which is why I also have a rookie, the only rookie on this entire video on this list, because I think Malik Neighbors from day one of minicamp is one of their top six players. I honestly think that. And I couldn't really think who would be number six on this list if it were not for Malik Neighbors, honestly. There are not a lot of good choices. New York Jets have like 15 players I could put on this list. They have so many good players. Number one is a toss-up between Sauce Gardner and Quinnen Williams. I think Quinnen Williams is arguably the best defensive tackle in the NFL, uh, especially in terms of what he does and in his system. You know, if Dexter Lawrence is the best nose tackle, Quinnen Williams might be the best in that classic four-man three-tech type of position. Sauce Gardner is arguably the best corner in the league. He can play zone at a high level, man at a high level, press at an extraordinary level. He's got great length and good agility um, and a lot of swag. CJ Mosley, top five linebacker in the NFL. Very, 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 very smart player. Throwback linebacker. Uh, Had one of his best seasons of his career, if not his best season of his career last year. Tyron Smith is still a great player. If if you're not sure about it, watch him last year on Dallas. Watch him move at camp. And then also look at his PFF stuff. Still a top three tackle in terms of, you know, what he did last year. Now expecting a decline, but still excellent. Brees Hall, one of the best running backs, in my opinion, in the NFL. I think he's a top five running back in the league. Garrett Wilson is a probably like a top, 16 receiver in the league, top 15. I think he's going to take a step forward with Aaron Rodgers throwing him the ball, but I love the way he runs his routes. Uh, Very, very savvy player. So, I mean, there's so many more. Quincy Williams, Hassan Reddick, uh, Johnson, uh, who else? Elijah Vera Tucker, obviously Aaron Rodgers. There's a lot of players here that could have made this list. The Philadelphia Eagles. Lane Johnson was my pick. And the reason for that is he's the most valuable player. Every time he gets hurt, they lose. I don't think I have to say anything else. Every every time Lane Johnson gets hurt, they lose. Jordan Mailata was 
better in 2023 according to pro football focus, but some of that I think is because of how much pressure the Eagles put on Lane Johnson to perform on that right side where they give a little bit more help to Mylotta, but that's just my opinion. Both are beasts. Can't really argue with it. A.J. Brown um, is a top five or six receiver in the league. You could probably switch him with Jordan Mylotta if you feel that way. You could even argue he's the best player, but I felt like Lane Johnson is arguably the best right tackle in the league. He's number one or number two. Jalen Carter is an up-and-coming stud of a defensive tackle. Last year, he kind of hit a rookie wall at some point, but early in the year, he was thoroughly dominant. Against New England, he kicked their absolute butt. I, they, couldn't, they couldn't block him. Jalen Hurts, I think he deserves to be in their top five because at his best, he is a playmaker. He is a great leader. He is a great runner. Um, there's only, you know, there's no one else that can do the tush push because of his leg strength. Devontae Smith was my honorable mention. Although, again, this is another team that I could have had multitude of players. Landon Dickerson, Saquon Barkley. Um, but he's he hasn't been on the team yet, so it's kind of hard to say where he would rank. Offensive or defensively, Huff, Sweat. Like, those guys also. Devontae Smith, though, 1,000 yards last year. 1,000 yards basically every year of his career so far. Super consistent player. You just know what you're going to get. So he's my honorable mention. Then we've got the Pittsburgh Steelers. TJ Watt, obviously, is the best. He might be the best player in the NFL, period, other than maybe Patrick Mahomes. He is, he is that good. And you just look at the record for a defensive player, when the Steelers have T.J. Watt and when they don't have T.J. Watt, I mean, it's just unbelievable, the difference, right? Minka Fitzpatrick, great player. I uh, love the way he plays. He's so instinctual. He, he does kind of give you some classic Ed Reed type of vibes in that regard. Uh, Cameron Hayward has been one of the best defensive linemen in the NFL for a decade or more. Uh, Walter Payton, man of the year. Alex Highsmith continues to get better and better and better as a powerhouse of a pass rusher. Patrick Queen has really become a very good linebacker, and I think he's going to take this Steelers defense to the next level. Isaac Sayamalu is their best offensive lineman, one of the best guards in the NFL, a former Philadelphia Eagle. Great player. George Pickens, uh, I know people probably want him on the list. Almost. Didn't quite make it. San Francisco 49ers literally could have 24 players on this list, but Christian McCaffrey is their best player. He might be also. If TJ Watt is not the second best player in the NFL, Christian McCaffrey might be as well. Uh, Christian McCaffrey, there's just nothing I can't, you know, Christian McCaffrey, there's just, he just does everything well. I just, I don't know one thing Christian McCaffrey doesn't do well. I really don't. He, I mean, uh, man, like, even the girlfriend looks good, bro. Come on. Like, Nick Boza. Nick Boza's a beast. Absolute animal. Uh, nothing else has to be said. Trent Williams is getting a little bit older, so baking in some regression. I move him from number two to number three. I thought he was still excellent last year, and especially in the run game. He, he's so impactful. They just run the ball left, and they pick up five yards. It's, it's really a cheat code. Fred Warner is one of the best linebackers, if not the best linebacker in the league, which is insane that he's at number four. But he's probably the second best linebacker, in my opinion, in the league right now. Excellent in coverage, great movement skills, and love his, his competitiveness. I love that about him. George Kittle, for what he does in terms of his value to the run and the pass game, that's why I put him above Debo and Brandon Ayuk. That's, that's the reason. But Kittle is one of the best tight ends in the league and, and still an explosive threat, a great yak cat threat, the best blocking tight end in the league. Brandon Ayuk is a exquisite route runner, a, a man coverage beater, um, just a, a vertical threat. Yards, a, yards after catch, yards per catch, both very high with that guy. Uh, Seattle Seahawks, DK Metcalf, I have as their best player just because I'm not willing to put Devin Witherspoon there quite yet, but I love both of these players. I think Witherspoon will be their best player this year. That's me saying that right now, but Metcalf is a freak. Freak. I think if he were on other teams, he might be even considered better, 
But Metcalf, fast, strong. He has games and moments where it's just like, I don't know how you cover that. I, I just don't know. Uh, he can catch the ball and snatch it out of the air. He can run by you. He can run you over. Devin Witherspoon just has instincts you can't teach. He he hits you as hard as I've ever seen a corner hit you. Um, and, you know, he can blitz. He can cover man zone. He is going to be great. Uh, Leonard Williams is still a very good player in this league. I'm excited to see what he does in Mike McDonald's scheme. Beast all around. Great long arms. Uh, great overall ability to use his leverage in the run in the pass game. Tyler Lockett is still a good player. I don't think he's quite what he used to be. I wish he would stop just catching the ball and going down. But, I mean, he is a very consistent Good route runner, especially, you know, he can do it outside, inside, burn you down the field, win from the slot. Good player. Kenneth Walker, explosive home run threat on every single carry. Julian Love, just an underrated, smart player that's always in the right spot. Good communicator in the back end for this defense. Going to have a huge year with Mike McDonald. Tampa Bay Buccaneers low-key have one of the best top fives in the entire league, in my opinion. Tristan Wirfs is probably a top three tackle in the league. Uh, Just a, he has everything in terms of technique and physicality and, you know, like power. Like, especially in the pass game, he has one of the best anchors in the league. Antoine Winfield Jr., some people would argue, is the best safety in the NFL in terms of his ability to be elite at all three spots. He could play, you know, free safety, strong safety, or like a lurker as like a blitzer or nickel player. Mike Evans is still one of the best receivers in the NFL. I don't care what you say. He lines up on the outside and he burns you. Uh, Levante David, love that guy. I just, I, 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 always, I almost tear up every time I talk about Levante. He's just so good. I just want Levante David to never retire. Mike Evans, for that matter, as well. Uh, Vita Vea is just Vita Vea. I don't, you know, he's a nose tackle that can drop into coverage. I don't know what else do I have to say about that. Uh, Chris Godwin is one of the toughest players you'll uh, you'll ever watch at wide receiver. I think he's going to be better this year because he's going to have another year removed from a major injury. But um, Godwin is a really really good player and consistent chain mover for them. Titans, Jeffrey Simmons is their best player, in my opinion, uh, overall. It, it's hard to say Sneed will be just because he's never played on the team. But Simmons is a force. I, at his best, he is one of the best defensive tackles in the NFL. Um, pa- run and pass game, very good player. Legereus Sneed is one of the best man cover corners in the league, if not the best last season. He can lock down a receiver on the perimeter. Calvin Ridley and Harold Landry. Landry is a great pass rusher from the edge. Calvin Ridley is a very nuanced and uh, just good route runner. Needs more consistency with the hands this year, but like I've said many times, I think this year he's going to be better than last year because he'll have a full offseason to work here in terms of another year removed from suspension and overall year of playing in the NFL. This year is going to be much more of what we're we're used to seeing from Calvin Ridley. He was good last year, but he should be great this year. Lloyd Cushenberry's low-key, one of the 10 best centers in the NFL. And Peter Skaronsky is on the rise as he's going to be a great guard in this league, I think. And then the commanders, Jonathan Allen has been the best player on this team for the past three or four years. Great pass rusher from the inside. One of the most underrated players at his position in the league and a force on every snap. Terry McLaurin, I I give this guy so much love and credit for consistently showing up and producing despite limited quarterback play. He has gone through the ringer in that regard. Deron Payne is an absolute monster at nose tackle for the commanders. Frankie Louvu is one of the most hybrid and uh, versatile linebackers in the NFL. He can blitz. He can cover. He can stop the run. He can play edge. Sam Cosme, their best offensive lineman by a a long margin. He was one of the five best players in his position, according to PFF last year. Andrew Wiley sneakily had a good year as well, signing with the Chiefs, uh, from the Chiefs to the Commanders after becoming a Super Bowl champion with Kansas City. Wiley was a really steady player for their right tackle position. So 
Those are, guys, every team's top five player list in the NFL entering 2024. Hopefully, this wasn't too long, but I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching. Gronk spike the like button if you enjoy this type of content. And don't forget, 100 likes. I'll give the top five players in NFL history for all 32 teams. That would be a lot of fun to do, so please get 100 likes. And subscribe, guys. We're, we're on our way to becoming the best damn NFL chat channel, you know, rant channel, whatever you call it, on the damn tube. So subscribe, guys. Peace.